Hi, and welcome back. At the moment I'm on my server multiplayer world, and I thought I'd do a quick video to talk about how to set up GregTech gas turbines. Now, these are the GregTech gas turbines right here. Um, they may look a little different, because I'm currently running the Sortex texture pack, which is what I use on my server multiplayer world. Though on many of my other videos, I just use uh, vanilla Minecraft. Okay. Now, the way GregTech gas turbines work is you feed gas into them, and they produce power for very simple blocks. Um, now, let me start by saying what the most important thing about these gas turbines are. They're only useful as a discontinuous mode of power generation. Okay, and what that means is if you're going to run these gas turbines constantly all the time, you're wasting your time. Okay, and I'll explain why that's the case right now. So the gas turbines only produce each 16 EU per tick, which isn't so bad, especially if you consider that they only take two windmills to generate, and you'll usually get about four EU per tick out of a windmill. So that means that per windmill, the gas turbine produces twice as much energy, which sounds excellent. However, there's a caveat to this. To produce the gas for the gas turbines, you need to run industrial centrifuges from Gig Tech. Okay? And the biggest drawback of that is the power necessary to produce one cell, one methane cell, is about half of the power that you get back from that methane cell. It's actually just over half the power you get back from that methane cell. Which means that over half of the power that you get from a gas turbine is automatically used just to produce the fuel for that gas turbine. So ultimately, gas turbines overall produce less than half of energy output that you think, because half of that goes towards producing the fuel. So if you take that in consideration, and you think, okay, well, they take two windmills to produce, and you know they're not really producing 60 EU per, 16 EU per tick, because over half of that is going towards making the fuel, they're making just a little under eight. Okay? Now, a windmill itself makes four EU per tick, which means that each gas turbine itself actually ends up producing less energy than the wind turbines that go into making it. Now, because there are other components that go, in, go into making it, such as stainless steel plates or uh, aluminum, gas turbines are resource-wise less efficient than wind generators. So you might be thinking, okay, well, if that's the case, what's the point in making gas turbines at all? And the reason you'd want to make gas turbines is the one strong benefit they have over wind generators, and that's that they do not run all the time. Okay, so if you don't need to produce energy from your gas turbines, you can take the fuel produced from your centrifuges over here and store it in a large tank. Okay, and here I'm using a railcraft tank, and this railcraft tank has just about one million millibuckets of methane stored in it. Okay? That amount of methane, if you do the math, is actually equal to about 10 MFSUs worth of power. So this tank is an incredibly cheap way to store power. Okay? So, in effect, gas turbines are actually really useful, but they're only useful if you don't run them all the time. And what you do is you store all the gas that you don't need to be run burning, like all the methane, Okay, and only use it when you need to burn it. Okay, and now I'll go over quickly about how you'd go about achieving this with Greg Tech. All right. So what you want to do is you want to have the power from your gas turbines, okay, feed into wires, and I have wires here that just run straight underneath the floor, connecting all these gas turbines. There's no uh, power converters, or I mean, no transformers or batteries or anything here and they go straight into this MFSU. All right? And what you want to do is you want to set up the MFSU so that it's on redstone behavior emit if full. I apologize, it's a little hard to see what that's saying because uh, NEI is overlaying it, but give me a second and I'll disable NEI. Okay. You see it says redstone behavior emit is full. What happens? is if this MFSU is full, it will emit a redstone signal that will go through this red alloy wire that I have here. Um, you don't need red alloy wire. 
Actually, if I replace this entirely with redstone, it would work just as well. Um, I have a second MFSU here, and I'll go into, in just a second, what this MFSU does. Okay? So basic, but this first one here sends out a signal if it's full. This redstone signal goes and it gets inverted, which means that I take the positive redstone signal and turn it into a redstone off signal. Okay? And that goes to a uh, fluid duct coming out of this uh, steel tank. This will work uh, just as well if you use a build craft pipe. Um, but you may have to power it a little differently. Alright, like you may have to use a redstone engine. Okay, now for those of you that aren't very familiar with uh, vanilla Minecraft mechanics, which I've noticed a lot of people in the modern Minecraft scene aren't, uh, what you want to do to invert a redstone signal is just send a redstone signal to a block that's underneath a torch. Okay, and what that does is it turns off the redstone torch, therefore turning off the signal that the redstone torch is sending to this uh, fluid act pump here. And I can give a quick demonstration of what will happen if this power drops below full, um, which will cause this redstone circle to turn off. So if I break this wire here, you see the signal turns off, and now these fluid ducts, they're filled with methane. Okay? The methane flows into these gas turbines, which fill up, and they start producing power. That power then goes to this MFSU, it starts filling it up. Of course now it's full. So it goes into the second one here and fills it up much quicker. Now, that gets us into the purpose of this second MFSU. Now, a lot of people, when they use these signals from one power unit, they only use a single power unit. Where this often creates a situation where you tend to waste a lot of energy. Because if you say, okay, emit a full, okay, to shut this thing off, and then it drops just below this 40 million EU that can be stored here, it will turn on your power generators, start feeling, putting fu uh, fuel into them. Okay? And those will produce power. However, it's going to only take one EU to refill this back up. So this will refill, and then all that power that these generators are still producing will just be wasted. So what the second MFSU does is it effectively just adds as a buffer okay, to take in any extra energy that can't be stored in this one that the generators uh, will continue to produce. Now what will happen is eventually these generators here will run out of fuel. Um, currently the gas is going to stay at around 100 because these uh, fluid ducts are still filled with methane. Okay, but eventually those will end empty and so will the gas turbines and power will stop going in. The buffer will eventually run out of power and then this first MFSU will drop below energy and it'll start feeding more fuel in. All right, and that's basically how you want this kind of system to work. And what it ends up doing is it ends up turning all your gas turbines and your tank into sort of like a mega battery. Okay, that could store tons of power. Like I said, this tank here, and this is a seven by seven uh, by six high Realcraft tank, stores about 10 MFSUs worth of methane, which is a ton of power. Okay. Um, and this is a great mid-game power setup uh, for when you're playing with Greg Tech. Unfortunately, this kind of power setup doesn't generally work very well in later game applications. For instance, if you want to start running things like matter fabricators or mining lasers, devices which always use a ton of power, you're not really going to need a kind of battery setup like this. Um, it will be convenient to have a round later game, but to power those kind of uh, energy generation things, you're either going to want to really upscale your power generation system, which you could potentially do by making tons and tons of gas turbines and industrial centrifuges, but really the best way to go about doing that at that point would be to make a fusion reactor, which is really the kind of power system Greg and Tech intends you to have if you're going to be running things like mining lasers and uh, mass fabricators, or matter fabricators, I think as they're called, right now. Okay. Now I'm going to get to a, a second part of the fuel automation, um, which doesn't have so much to do with saving energy and controlling energy usage, but it has more to do with controlling uh, cell usage. So the cells that you produce from tin for storing methane. 
Um, and this is especially important if you're using something like applied energistics to place the cells in your centrifuges. So with applied energistics, you can't pick how many cells or how much uh, substrate or fuel or carrots in this case, it, and that's what I'm using to produce the methane, will go into the centrifuges. It'll just dump all the methane cells into them automatically. And what happens is after those methane cells go into the industrial centrifuges and produces methane and fills them up, they come out here to my fluid transposer and they get pulled into this uh, tank. Okay. Well, there's a problem here because these guys will keep on running and they'll keep on being fueled with empty cells till all the empty cells in my AE system are used up and filled with methane. And that becomes a problem because you don't have empty cells for other uses. So the way you get around this problem is if we take a look here, you can see that once the fluid transposer can't put any more into this tank, like this tank is full, methane cells will start to build up in the inventory of the fluid transposer. Eventually that inventory will fill and it will get to 64 and then methane cells will accumulate in the AE system. So what you want to do to eventually turn off your industrial centrifuges once you don't want to you know, start filling up more methane cells because they can't go anywhere is you just want to take a level emitter and set that level emitter to output or not output a redstone signal. Um, it depends how you want uh, the export buses to respond. I have it set up to emit a signal when the level is below 10 over here, okay? And when it's below 10 methane cells. And what that does is it sends a signal along these marble blocks here and that hits these precision export buses which are set to only be active with a signal, okay? And what that means is when the methane cells in my AE system are below 10, these precision export buses will export carrots and empty cells into the centrifuges and cause the centrifuges to produce more methane. But if the amount of cells in my system is above 10, these centrifuges will stop functioning and they will stop consuming empty cells. And ultimately what this does is it prevents my system from being over flooded with empty cells. Um, unfortunately, I'll still end up with about a stack of empty cells in each one of these industrial centrifuges and a stack of uh, filled cells in this fluid transposer which makes nine stacks of cells necessary to run the setup like I'm currently running it. Um, in my case this isn't a big deal because I don't seem to have any lack of tin so I've just been producing tons of empty cells. A better way to do this would be to either have a separate AE system that is one off your main network just for controlling um, the system here or even better to use logistic pipes because of logistic pipes you can set the amount of items you want in an inventory so I can keep these from filling up and I can be like okay just keep one cell in each industrial centrifuge only keep one cell in the fluid transposer and then all that you need is about I don't know maybe 20 cells or so to keep the whole thing going instead of like I don't know I'm close to uh, probably around 800 cells necessary right now alright so if you have any questions about the setup um, please let me know but this is by far uh, the best way I've found to use Greg Tech gas turbines um, as a power generation method. Alright, thanks for watching. Till next time.